All right, Dean. Hey, tell us how you got started in film and what film means to you. Well, I mean, probably like a lot of you, I, I love cinema. I love being transported to different worlds. I love these moments that just move us to tears or, or break our hearts. Um, and then when I got to USC and I studied film there, I began to see that film was more to me about self-expression and about you know, using it as art and figuring out how to speak to a larger, a larger audience in a way. Yeah. Um, and film, yeah, I mean, film is, is so relevant, and not just film, but all sorts of media like we see, streaming or TV, um, and we know that it speaks to lots and lots of people, so film is an incredible medium yeah. on so many artistic levels, and every time I watch a film that just moves me, there's, there's nothing like it, so yeah. I love it. It's kind of like the queen of all the arts, it kind of like combines all of in some ways these yeah. things yeah, yeah. No, i love that well you know i think some people uh especially in the christian sphere um are worried about film and what film does is christian film an oxymoron no um <laughs> it shouldn't be i mean sadly christian schlock is an oxymoron um <laughs> and yet christian movies tend to be that and yeah. so um, no, I think it's it's important um, for us to have many voices as Christians making all sorts of media, whether it is Christian or, or not Christian. I think there's a space for everyone to be able to tell their story in a particularly honest way. Hmm. Well, what, can, I, can I ask then, what makes a good film from a Christian perspective? Like, how do you know a film is a good one? Well, I mean, that is kind of subjective, but for... For people here that are watching films, you kind of just know it instinctively. You feel you feel it. So if if a film has these resonant moments, if if it resonates with you, you know you know it's a good film. And what makes a film resonate is oftentimes like really intriguing or interesting characters. Yeah. Um, a really strong want that they're you know they have something that they that they want in the story, and. I mean, we know based on good performances and probably good visual design for those of you that are taking visual aesthetics. Um, so, you know, these, these students in this new generation has never been savvier when it comes to watching films and media. Yeah. And within the first 30 seconds, they can, they can sense whether something feels false or not. Yeah. And so I think it's our, our job to stay two steps ahead and to make sure that the things that we're communicating are, feel honest. Yeah. And that's what makes a good film, I think. Yeah. Well, how do, we, how do we develop this honesty then? You know, as filmmakers, how do we develop that? But just in general, in life, how mm. do we develop some of this honesty, maybe even like developing our voice into something mm. to speak into our culture a little bit? Yeah, I mean, voice is, is really important. I mean, in the School of Cinema and Media Arts, we teach a lot of craft. Mm. And craft is obviously very important because it gets you jobs and, and it makes a film look good. Yeah. But we also go to the Sundance Film Festival um, every January with a class of students. And we see films there that are there not because of their craft, but because of their voice. Yeah. Because you know, if you spend a week at Sundance and you watch like 20 films or whatever, you'll begin to see why those films are there because they all have such distinct, strong voices. Mm. And so for us to try and get, that, get to that place of honesty, I think we need to be a little bolder and take a few more risks yeah. and not feel afraid of people's judgments and not try and pander to the, the lowest common denominator. Yeah. But really to to you know, strive to tell an honest story because you know, you'll never be a good writer if you are constantly worried about what people are thinking, if you're constantly worried about offending your parents. Um, you'll never get to that place of honesty in your own writing. Yeah. Well, can you, is, there, is there someone where you say, this Christian or these Christians do um, a good job at developing their, their voice in film and what makes their voice so good? Well, I mean, the ultimate person who's a Christian and making films would be Terrence Malick. Yeah. And his films aren't, um, I mean, yeah, thematically, you can find all sorts of Christian themes in his, in his films. But that's not to say they're Christian films, and that's not to say that they, you know, hit people over the head with messages. They're, yeah. they're art. 
and they communicate really beautiful things to to their audiences. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. Every film doesn't have to be a literal explanation of the gospel. Right. Not, we're not hitting people over the head. It's, it's an expression of the way we see our world, and we see the world with God in mind. I yeah. love that. Well, here's um, what, what um, are some examples of films that are presently maybe even th- in theater, maybe features, just so we uh, have a sense of them? Like, what are what's some examples of films that do a really good job of pre- presenting a voice? Well, I mean... If you ask probably everyone in this room what their favorite films are, 99% of them would say films that probably aren't made by Christians <laughs> or not, not even Christian films. And that, that says a lot. I mean, that says to me that, that it's voices, these other voices that are speaking into these people's lives that yeah. have more resonating things to say than, than what Christian films are saying. Yeah. And so, I mean, if you look at Greta Gerwig, who made one film, Lady Bird, that resonated with a lot of people. Yeah. Um, you can see so clearly what her, her voice is, and it was an exciting voice. Yeah. So, yeah, there's lots of films out there that, that are telling stories. And I think we need to not force Christians into boxes as if they have to tell this story when they should be telling their own story, which could possibly be like a Lady Bird or something. Yeah. Well, you know, Christians who tell that story in that box, mm-hmm. what does that do to our world? If we only tell that story in that box and the film becomes Christian in that way? Yeah, I mean, I, I love stories that break my heart. Me mm. personally, I'd rather have a story that ends um, where I'm, I feel devastated as opposed to inspired mm. because that, that moves me and that makes me want to do something. And so I think... You know, Christians sometimes think that they need to throw a redemptive ending onto every film because we need to be happy about our, our worldview. Yeah. When really happy endings, and this is a quote from Morrison Wells, happy endings depend on where you end the story. Hmm. And so if you're telling a 10 minute story, you know, and it's about this specific 10 minutes of, of life, of someone's life, it may not have the happy or redemptive ending that, that we're looking for. Yeah. And so we need all kinds of stories. It's fine to tell these other stories that fit into boxes. I'm not criticizing that. But yeah, you're right. We can't just have those stories. We need to have other stories to speak to other people like me. Um, I want to see stories that speak to me too. Yeah. Well, um, I know you oversee our Biola film every year. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about what it is this year and maybe even ways that you're trying to portray the voice through this film? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this this semester's Biola film is called Caesura, so, and I think it's a really great, it's gonna be a really great film. Um, it's actually a, a Me Too story um, told from a male perspective. Mm. So it's about a male student who is abused by a, a male teacher. Mm. And I think that Christians should be able to tell stories like this that touch on relevant social issues um, that we should be the ones that are caring for people, that we should be the guardians of those stories that we should be the ones that are showing compassion and, um, and really showing people what, what it means to, to be in that specific world. Yeah, yeah, great. First question, what is the most common mistake Christians make when approaching filmmaking? <clears throat> Good question. Um, I mean, one mistake might be trying to put the message above the, the story. Mm. So stories are what resonate with us. Stories are the most important aspect of, of any film. But when you're forcing a message to fit into that and yeah. you're thinking of the message too much, um, because obviously, yeah, we have something to say, we have a message, but when you are trying to force that message, um, it takes away from the story and it feels, fal- it feels false and yeah. inauthentic. It just feels like you're forcing something into a box again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay, cool. Here's another question. Here we go. What are your favorite films yeah. and why? Um, I mean, my all-time favorite film is The Shawshank Redemption. There we go, okay. That's an incredible film. Yeah, um, it's a great one. Yeah, and obviously, yeah, the redemption aspect is amazing in that film. Yeah. Um, I love Blue Valentine. Um, mm. Blue Valentine broke my heart. Mm. And there's another film called, a documentary called Minding the Gap, which was like also heartbreaking, but very beautiful and, and incredible. Mm. Um, yeah, there's, 
there's so many um, different films that I, I love. I could go on for a long time. I Mag Magnolia and mm. you know anything by P.T. Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. So the, for, for you, like just the, the the breaking of the heart, it's just like you're it's resonating with you, and so you can understand what the filmmaker is trying to mm. to explain about our world. Yeah. And that just resonates, makes you think about it. Yeah, because sometimes when you tie things up too cleanly, you're giving people answers as opposed to, you know, forcing them to ask questions and, yes. th and think about things. So I'd rather not have something handed to me. I'd rather wrestle with it. Yeah. And so when I think about films over the, it, when it makes me think about them for days, that's more impactful than, oh, I feel happy for five minutes and now I go back to life. That's, <laughs> that's like escapism and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. That's okay, but I, I like other films too. Great, great. Here's another question. I know you've worked on films in Berlin, Jakarta, and Japan. Can you explain the importance of working on global films? Yeah, I mean, fostering collaboration internationally. Um, in particular, the film that we worked on in Jakarta, um, it was a class of Biola students. We were working with a crew of uh, Muslim Indonesian filmmakers. Yeah. And it was incredible to understand one another and for our students to um, have their guards down and to be transformed and to understand what it means to be of a different country, a different religion. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't say enough about, about the importance of going overseas and, and whether you're making films or not making films, but just to travel and to meet other people different from yourself, that's, that's important. Yeah, great. Here's another question. Do you think there's any kind of content, graphic, that's inappropriate for Christians to use in their films? Why or why not? That's a, that's a tough question, and that is something that you guys all need to wrestle with yourselves. I mean, yeah. for, for me personally, um, I mean, sexually graphic content, probably not appropriate. But with that said, there are films that have used it and been incredibly powerful and effective. So, um, so you know, it really, it really depends on what exactly what the story is. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, we don't want to just use gratuitous, you know, whatever it is. Um, yeah, so it depends on, on where you're at as a filmmaker, as a storyteller. Yeah. And also, um, yeah, I don't know, sorry. Yeah, no, what I appreciate about even your answer right now is, hey, this is what I think, but you're saying, we have to kind of like develop our voice too mm -hmm. in the way not only we tell films, but also just approach our world. And so I appreciate that even yeah. as you explained that. Everyone here has a responsibility to themselves yeah. and to their, their own walk and their own upbringings yeah. to figure out where they fit. I'm just saying that some of you might not fit in a box and you need to explore that and figure out what your voice is. Yeah. No, that's good. Okay, here's another question. Can you make a Christian film without labing, labeling it as Christian? Also, Dean, you rock. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so last year we had a film called Burden come to campus to screen, and it was about a KKK member who, um, who, becomes, who, who has a redemptive path to mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you would label that as a, as a Christian film, but it was absolutely a Christian film, even mm. though, yeah, for some people, it was probably like an R-rated movie, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and also The Shawshank Redemption, I think, you know. Um, well, I don't know. If, I'm not sure if you're saying that if that's a Christian film or not, but Burden, for sure, I'd say, is a Christian film that you probably wouldn't label as a Christian film because there's an explicit like baptism and, and redemption scene at the end. Yeah, okay. Here's another question. Ooh, I like this one, okay. Is there a place for dumb, fun entertainment? And how can we make those kind of films to honor God? Yeah, of course. Um, film shouldn't just be one thing. I mean, yeah, you, you need to have fun with it. And so if you wanna just pick up a camera, pick up your iPhone, start shooting something, absolutely. Film should be fun, and I think God created film not just to be a tool, but to, yeah, be a tool for entertainment, too. So. Yeah. Is there a dumb, fun movie or show that you like? Um, hmm. I can't Or that's of... not what you're because you just like your heart broken. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, there's, there's lots of stuff. I can't think of anything offhand, but... 
Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> You're good. Are you an Enneagram 4? You're just like... You What's just, that? Enneagram 4. Do you know what Enneagrams are? Okay, for, for, forget it. Okay, here we go. Let's go to the next one. Okay. From an artistic perspective, how do you incorporate themes of hope or selfless love without being so straightforward that it turns off people who aren't Christian? That's a, that's a great question because, yeah, I mean, that's the thing that you want to wrestle with is how do you incorporate hope and selfless love in a subtle way. Um, but I think you can do that through various stories. And we hear stories in the news about people that you know, have sacrificing love. Um, mm. And so maybe that's one way is to see real life stories that actually, that actually provide that and do that. Mm. And sort of appropriating that for you know, your, your own stories. But um, no, I think that's a thoughtful question. And I think, yeah, you just need to be thoughtful as a storyteller about how to, um, it, about how to be honest as well as not hitting people over the head with that. So yeah, great question. Yeah, that's good. Okay, here's another question. What voices in film do you think we need to hear more of? Well, I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is we need to hear more Asian American Voices. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. All right. I mean, yeah, of course, we need to hear lots of different voices. Um, but for me personally, and we have been seeing a little bit more here and there of Asian American voices, but Asian Americans have largely been invisible yeah. in the media. And, and the portrayals that we do see are so one-sided. They're so stereotypical. And even Crazy Rich Asians, that was a breakthrough. But not all, not all Asians are, are rich, and so yeah. <laughs> we need to have more stories so that we have a more three-dimensional picture of who Asian Americans are. Yeah. Just like with you know, any, any other race, we need to have more stories. Um, that's why with like Cauca Caucasians, or like just like a lot of mainstream films, there's such a wide portrayal of Caucasians in the media yeah. that you can have some that are rich, some that are poor, some that are crazy or not. But in, Asi in Asians and other um, color peop you know, people of color, you have one story that, that tells their story and suddenly people think, oh, all Asians are like this. Completely. And so we need to have a wider range of stories to, and I'm talking about for all people of color, um, to be able to tell our, our stories. Completely. Like, I have no idea how to do any martial arts. But that's what I yeah. was told. I don't fly. Up. Right. <laughs> so, okay. Here's another question. Okay, how do you become a successful storyteller with a powerful voice in the world without sacrificing your values mm -hmm. as a believer? Um, yeah, I mean... I don't think the two are, are separate. I think you can be a successful storyteller and be a Christian. Um, I think you need to wrestle with your faith to make it as strong and authentic as possible and figure out what stories you can tell. And once you are, once you do have a measure of success, I mean, yeah, you need to be nurturing your own personal like heart as you're nurturing your creative talent. Um, yeah. The two are not separate. You have to, and hopefully one, one will inform the other. Your heart will inform your writing yeah. and your life experience will, experiences will inform your heart. And so, yeah, they're not exclusive. I think you can, you know, you can continue to, to cultivate your heart while still being a su successful storyteller. Yeah. No, good again, question. no, I love that again. I love your answer again, because it's, we're, we're, not, we're not supposed to be put in boxes, right? Mm -hmm. We're supposed to engage our world and engage mm -hmm. our culture and tell the stories that people can resonate with. Yeah. And then we share the gospel in some sense through that and, and people knowing our story a little bit more deeply. Absolutely. I think those conversations are earned. Yeah. Because, you know, it's one thing to stand on a street corner with a megaphone. Um, that might be effective for some people. I doubt anyone here really does that. So why would you expect our films to do that? Mm. I feel like, you know, sometimes these, it's the relationships in which you begin to, they see your character, they see your actions, you begin to, you know, develop these relationships. And then once 
that's earned, then you have conversations that are much deeper than that. Same thing kind of with film. I yeah. mean, the audiences need to trust us as storytellers and trust that we're not just going to be hitting them over the head with a message thinking that this is going to finally break through to them. We need to, you know, engage and, and tell stories that actually, you know, have a little nuance to them. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Here's another question. What do you think are ways that Christian films can improve so that they are more effective in their message? I don't know. That's, it, it is kind of an oxymoron because um, Christian films are in such a box that don't, you know, they have to have, they're very formulaic, so they have to have a specific ending. So can you have a good film that ends, you know, in such a predictable manner? Mm. Um, but then I mentioned the film Burden, and it does end like that, and it is a great film, but it is probably an R-rated film as well. So, but there's someone who is wrestling with things, who's trying to be honest with, with storytelling, and um, I, I, I think that maybe that's, that's something to think about. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Quite another question, how did you become a Christian, Dean? That's a, that's a good question. Yeah. I mean, that's a nice question. I appreciate that. Um, so I became a Christian when I was a sophomore at, at USC. Yeah. And just really quickly, yeah, my sister Joyce was the only Christian in our family. Um, she married a really godly man. She started teaching at a Christian school. Um, and this was all when I was a sophomore. And she her, had her students write me letters um, telling me about Jesus, asking me about my skateboard, asking <laughs> if I could come visit them. So during Christmas, I went to go visit her class, did a little skateboard demo. I ollied over her. <laughs> um, I noticed on her chalkboard they had a prayer list, and my name was at the top of the list. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so then um, during lunch, the principal took me into her office and shared the gospel with me. And so that's pretty much when I became a Christian. Mm. And the principal's all the principals, like grandkids, came to Biola. Like wow. Hannah Chu, who was a CMA major, yeah, graduated from our program and yeah, is working at Pixar now. So yeah. yeah. Well, what I love again about that story is that there was an earned relationship. Mm -hmm. That relationship was developed by your sister, so yeah. that the story of the gospel can be told. Good point. Yeah, that's good. Here's another question: With all the technicalities of film, how do you keep the story, or the art, and story the top priority? How do you not lose the art? Yeah, an another really great question. So story always comes first. Story should inform all of your creative decisions. So again, Christian film or not Christian film, I think filmmakers need to understand that they need to first understand what story they're telling, what the tone of the story is, and that should begin to determine the creative and technical choices that they make. Um, so never put the technical aspects of film above the story because then you're trying to fit the story into this like technical cinematic box. Yeah. And that's where you have these incongruities like where it just doesn't feel right. Yeah. So you got to match the tone, the, tech, the style with the tone. Yeah, good. Well, Dean, our final question always on the Biola Hour is what biblical principles have shaped your thoughts for today? Well, I mean, I was thinking about Luke 6, where, you know, Jesus is like, do not judge and you will not be judged, do not condemn and you will not be condemned, forgive and you'll be forgiven, give and it'll be given to you. Um, I think, yeah, we should not judge each other as much. And this is what I tell my students on the first day of class, is that some of us are able to watch R-rated movies and process them and we shouldn't judge people for that. And some of us don't want to watch them at all, and that's okay too, and we shouldn't judge them for that. We should have a mutual understanding. I mean, also Philippians 2, in your relationships have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who mm. being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Yeah. But, you know, he humbled himself, so. Yeah, I love that, I love that. Help me thank Dean for sharing with us today. Discover who you're called to be at Biola University, a leading Christ-centered university in Los Angeles, with programs on campus and online. Subscribe for more of our videos and learn more at biola.edu.